Welcome everybody to Straight Shoot a Wrestling Podcast. Santi and I are back for another discussion, but first, it's been a minute, Santi. How you been, bud? I can't complain. It has been a, it's been a minute, so I got to get used to doing this whole post- podcasting shtick again, but uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll get this going. Yeah, sweet buddy. All right, so Santi, you didn't really know what we were getting into today, but I came with a topic. The what does the future hold for the World Heavyweight Championship and Monday Night Raw? We've now know that Seth Rollins is going to be carrying the WWE and the World Heavyweight Championship on that workload of a back that he has. And Roman's doing his thing with the implosion of the bloodline over on SmackDown. Now, Santi, I want to talk strictly the World Heavyweight title because there's two elements to this. First off, how is it going to be defended and how is Seth going to work uh, in interact his workload with the movie that he's now filming? And... Are we sure that the world title is going to be a strong representation like the old gold belt? The old gold belt was synonymous with history. Now, this one, everyone's saying it just feels like a secondary title. So first off, I want to get your feeling on the title itself. Do we view this as a secondary title or is this something WWE can seriously build a true working champion around? I, well, I think they're, that it's they're they're starting off on a not great note with the world title not having been the main event of Night of Champions. I get it; like the bloodline storyline is huge. I mean, it even trumped both Royal Rumble matches last year. Uh, so, like, I, I do get it from that perspective. the The bloodline storyline is probably the biggest thing that's happened in professional wrestling, um, probably since Jesus, man. Like, probably the invasion invasion austin mcmahon something back like, there it's literally like i would say like it's the most memorable storyline since maybe the invasion um so i understand that closing the show but one of the casualties of that is that the other aspects of the show that, that don't get to main event do feel relegated to by de facto less important and one of those being the world heavyweight championship so it's already not off to to a great start i was personally hoping to start to get a little bit of information insights and removal of the fog of war as to what's going to happen with this world heavyweight championship on monday night raw this past episode of monday night raw only to be given an interruption from aj styles who by the way was just so frustrating in that promo because he'll go from like I'm gonna I'm I'm here to challenge you, but just kidding to congratulate you, but yeah. you don't deserve it. You earned it. It's like Jesus Christ, AJ, figure it out. Like, are you are you friends? You not friends? Anyways, it's super frustrating. Um, but yeah. I don't believe that for a second that that's gonna be the path of the World Heavyweight Championship because they even were making references as to how stupid it is for AJ to have been on Raw because he's on SmackDown. So they really did. Very very little to help us understand who's eligible in in Mm -hmm. terms of superstars. Like, is it only raw superstars that are eligible to go after this title? Uh, What kind of cadence we're going to get in terms of uh, title defenses? You know, they said the working man's title. Could we have expected? Are we expecting this to now be defended every pay-per-view during some um, Monday Night Raws. I don't know. I, I I don't really know. They haven't really shed enough light on that. Um, so we're kind of you know. I I just talked a lot without answering your question because we're at we're we're nowhere with this title as of right now. Exactly, and it's kind of funny how the draft went out the window after two and a half weeks. Like that 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 was the funniest part. Like AJ showing up. We're I think we were both sitting there lost on our streams, being like, they made this big effort and this big point to say the draft is finally going to separate all this crossover BS. And I guess for one night only, AJ was able to jump ship and be a free agent, which was crazy. Adam Pierce, AJ, do you have your gear on you? I'm a professional, Adam. Like come on like this is ridiculous um but to your point like i understand that we did not get any answers but still in the same light they have put a very significant build into this all the way up to uh the interviews with Corey Graves uh, for Seth Rollins and Seth Rollins has made some extremely um, I wouldn't say detrimental 
uh, comments towards Roman, but I will say uh, very direct comments towards Roman and his world title reign and how Seth is going to be a very different champion to him. Now, if that's the case, can we see once this bloodline implosion goes away? Like, are we do you see both titles being put back into one and maybe the universal title d- disappearing and it becoming just the WWE title and we go back to Raw and SmackDown or are we going to have still three titles because really this is what there is no answers given to us no there's nothing and you know I think we were asking all of these same questions when the title was originally unveiled like okay like is are those two titles now considered one championship can Roman put one of the titles on the line and not the other I don't know no one knows and this is the booking hellhole that the WWE has put themselves in with these world titles and and, and, and it's this booking hellhole of Roman Reigns which by the way I don't think Roman Reigns should lose or split the titles like let the story play out like let's see where this goes we are we are riding the greatest storyline in wwe history i'm not saying that i'm just saying that this world title is 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 a casualty of this entire process uh do do do, like my one simple question that no one can answer do we have two titles or do we have three Steve, do we have two? Do we have, no one is able to answer that. WWE has provided no no clarity, no no how to view world titles for dummies per se. We yeah. we don't know, right? So it leaves us all to speculation to try and connect dots to try and make sense of a fictional plot that really shouldn't be this difficult. But because of the um, the inconsistencies with the way that the WWE is are like treats certain things it's tough yeah. for us to be able to to really make a good guesstimation of how they're treating this world title in comparison to the other two or the other one yeah and uh, even like merging the title of like the actual name title of the two titles it's very confusing because physically there are two yeah 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 like if you were to merge them, you might as well just make it the black WWE title and now have the WWE title on Fox and the world title on Raw. Sorry, on SmackDown and then on Raw. Um, but really, like, it's just so confusing. I think we're I think hopefully and this is me praying that we get a lot of answers after SummerSlam. I think SummerSlam is going to be the culmination of virtually all the questions needing to be answered. Uh, just the way I'm seeing the booking Roman will still be champion, but I still feel that the new season of uh, WWE always quote starts in September. So I think that's when we're going to get all the full answers. They're going to play out the rest of the, the rest of their, their fiscal basically. Um, so uh, we're just going to be throwing out ideas and virtually trying to figure this all out as each week and each episode goes by. But I want to go back to my second, my original first question. What about Seth Rollins as the champion and the first world heavyweight champion? Obviously Seth has carried over virtually for the last 10 years, minus the injury, some of the best content and some of the best matches and some of the best feuds in WWE. Now we've got Seth at 35 He's now the new world heavyweight champion. He's moving into Hollywood. Are we to expect that this is going to be truly the working man's title or it's going to be the rock coming in saying I'm never leaving and then only showing up every other uh, every two weeks? There's a second part to my question. Who is the best feud for Seth to go into right now? Um, In terms of feud, um, you know, they called it the working man's title. I, I mean, I'm sure there's better um, foils in terms of storyline that they can pick. But because it's the working man's title, in my head, I would love to see somebody who has been putting in a lot of work and getting a chance. And that is member of the Judgment Day Damian Priest what yep. he has been doing over the last couple of months he had a he had a great sequence with with Seth Rollins great in-ring chemistry between those two during that tag match I think 
that could be a great first feud to showcase the working man's title just like how they did in smackdown the land of opportunity where the first um where the first feud for the title were the two working horses of dean ambrose and dolph ziggler uh, mm-hmm. so uh, I, I would love for this world title to highlight and give opportunities to new faces um, while also giving them somebody opposite of them in Seth Rollins who can help elevate their work and make them feel special, just like how he did with Omos. Like Omos felt special during okay. a match with Seth Rollins um, and now put a title behind that. Now you can make people who who need that extra little bit, bit of help to feel special be special. And I think Damian Priest is one of those guys yeah i i think damian priest is probably the second first or second on my list um i was gonna say it's either gunther or damian priest but after the re- uh the recent i believe fightful uh news news article saying that priest is being looked at as a top guy in the back now considering all the work he's done over the last 18 months i think damian priest is probably the strongest shout to be the next cha- the first challenger for the world heavyweight championship and i'm not mad about it judgment day everyone said 18 months ago judgment day needs to disband it's weak it's stale it's not going anywhere now it's literally the best faction in professional wrestling right now Mm -hmm. and and that's the beauty of triple h he doesn't end things abruptly unlike vince mcmahon remember the hurt business under under triple h I mean, the hurt business was over at the beginning, oh, even yeah. with even with Vince McMahon, and even yep. that got cut early. Um, so that's one of the beautiful things with Triple H. He's willing to let the wine actually breathe before mm-hmm. you know before spilling it and saying I'm done with this. He actually allows things to play out, and it and it's been working wonders for him. Um, but yeah, like even I, I even like the idea of a secondary person within a faction getting this nod up to the top, even if it is for just one feud, one pay per view, kind of like EO Sky did with Bianca Belair, and they ended up having a banger of a match. Um, I wouldn't say that like. You know, if you put Damian Priest as his first feud, do I think that Damian Priest is going to win that? No. Like as a smart wrestling fan, I would say I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't put any money on it. Um, mm-hmm. But would it be a fantastic match that I would love to pay for? Absolutely. One hundred percent. And I think that's that's what this title can be used for as the hey, let's just have really, really great matches um, yeah. and and naturally build naturally build feuds out of them, even if it isn't just uh, immediately Seth Rollins versus versus Roman Reigns, for example. Yeah. Is this now I think my final question about the world title, because I've got my opinion on this. Are we going to see long reigns with this or like are we going to see two, three hundred day reigns with this title or are we actually going to see like this thing get passed? Um, I don't Now It could take away from the the glory of it. But are we going to see like 90 day reigns? Like, I I feel that this is going to be one of those ones that, you know, Seth could lose on a Monday night, but pick it back up on a pay-per-view literally a month later. And I'm not saying I'm I'm completely OK with it, but it's something new and fresh that we haven't seen. I don't want this to be the 24 seven title. Right. But seeing that, oh, you know what? You just weren't good enough on that day, but you know what? Next week, I want my rematch. Kind of very much like the uh, mid-2000s were sure. with some, you know what I mean? That kind of concept. I, I don't think so, and the reason I say that is because um, WWE has proven to themselves that other things aside from the world title are capable of main eventing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think now you can run with longer title reigns and you know elevate other talent elsewhere with the intercontinental championship the u.s championship heck how many times have the tag titles now been in the main event picture so now because championships feel special now across the board in wwe you can have these longer reigns where it doesn't feel like somebody's just gatekeeping and preventing younger talent from being able to to win to to win the big one now the big one can be somewhere else now the big one can be the intercontinental championship it could be the u.s title it could be a tag team feud the big one the concept of the big one is 
different than it was back in that mid 2000 era where like the only back then, like you were only really recognized as a guy. If you won a champ, if you won the world heavyweight championship or the WWE championship, right? The intercontinent, those other titles were stepping stones. Now those aren't stepping stones. Those are genuine prizes to covet and go after. So I could see a world where the world heavyweight championship sees longer reigns, you know, 200 days plus. Um, yep because again we have these other avenues of uh, being able to showcase main event talent yeah and i agree with that uh wholeheartedly i think um they really need to make uh the world heavyweight championship look as prestigious for one but doing it in a way that other feuds and other the story is more important than I think Freddie Prince Jr. said it on Chris Van Vliet a couple of weeks ago, saying that the, the title is just a piece of jewelry. It's the story and the creation around the feud that is what is the most enjoyable. It's yeah. just a piece of jewelry at the end of the day. And without the jewelry, you're still going to get a big match and know who goes over. Right. So I I think along the same lines, like Rollins doesn't need to drop this till maybe next year, maybe WrestleMania if yeah. they decide to do something big. But at the end of the day, it's just a piece of jewelry. Yeah. And, and uh, if I can jump in there, I'll give you like a great example of like what like it's literally just a piece of jewelry. I'll bring it back to SummerSlam 2004 when Randy Orton beat Chris Benoit for the World Heavyweight Championship. No one cared. People cared when the storyline began of he dropped the title immediately because he wasn't getting over as champion but yeah. then he became the legend killer then the storyline of him and the undertaker began you know like the it really is storylines at the end of the day not just whoever is holding the strap um but you know those uh, the that jewelry they they are really important vehicles for storylines and yeah. we were it, before we were in a time where the only vehicle for an intriguing storyline were the world titles now we have quite a few like i said tag titles mid card titles they, they, there's so many more options nowadays yeah exactly guys i think that's where we're gonna cut it off santi thank you so much for finally coming back and uh gracing us with your presence uh, i know you're busy on all your other channels right now but i'm, uh, I'm a part-timer now clearly clearly john cena um guys uh, speaking of all your channels santi where can people find you uh you know what all my socials are there dude i am like I'm, I'm an octopus now i'm everywhere tiktok twitch youtube twitter all of them okay just 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 go find the one you like all right, and pick that one. Fair enough. And guys, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Mr. Tesh and over on my TikTok at Mr. Tesh. Guys, thank you so much for uh, joining us for this episode of Straight Shooter Wrestling Podcast. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like on the YouTube and any other platform that we're on. Make sure you leave a comment or leave a like. It really helps us with everything else. Guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.